Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brad Supercoach Pro. Today we are doing the 2024 Supercoach Team Picker. Um, so this is for gold members only that have the picker. If not, uh, for the casual fan, you'll have to wait till January sometime. I think it normally releases um, for the rest of them. So we're starting off in the back line as per usual when you do a picker, I suppose. Um, I should note, if you're going to pick around players, you should probably pick around your rookies first. However, I have a rough idea of where I'm going to go with my premiums as well. So starting off in the back line, I'm going to go day cost. I think a lot of people early on uh, over analyzing the fixture a little bit. I mean, a lot of it's best 18 anyway for the buyers. Um, and in saying that, People also worried about that four round four tag, but as a non Nick Day cost starting pick last year, I'm not getting burnt again. Um, the kid's only going to get better. I don't really care about the tag. You can play mid and defense really well. Um, and it's just such a hard working player to always get around the ball and always make himself an option. So for me, he's a no brainer. He's also for that price, a decent VC and C option. And I think people, um, don't really take that into consideration when picking premium sometimes is are they actually worthy of a VC at least and, and Dacos is actually captain worthy. So for me, I'm starting him. I don't think he will be moved out of my side um, throughout the preseason pick videos. And then for me, number two, um, it's probably out of Sicily and Stewart. I'll probably pick one or the other. For now, I'm going to go Sicily because Stewart's role is going to be the midfield this year. Not sure how well he'll score in the midfield. So I'm just going to stick with Sis. Um, he hurt me last year when he wasn't suspended. So see how we go. I don't love the pick considering he is a hothead and he does love getting in trouble a fair bit. Um, and then for my third, I think most of them um, are going to go one or two ways. So this preseason looks like people are hot on Ridley or Young. Um, for me, Ridley's burnt me um, a few times. And I just feel like he's the 105 kind of guy. He's priced at 94 average roughly, I think, or a little bit more than that. But I think I'd rather take a punt on Young in the midfield there um, if I'm going to take a punt on one of these guys. And, I mean, if he's playing midfield, he's also going to get that deeper piece swing. So that's what locks that one in for me. Um, now, going to your rookies, you can probably start iffy players and players that you don't think have great durability because once they do poop to bed, let's put it that way, um, uh, you can get rid of them pretty quickly. For me, um, I, I, I really hate the pick, to be honest, but the price is too good to say no. So I think you guys know where I'm going with this. And Zach Williams, um, we know what he's done. Look, I'm not thinking he's a in a high 90s by any means. I think he's probably just a... 85 to sort of 80 range in super coach scoring. And I think that's well and truly good enough. And I think by around 10, he'll probably get injured. So yeah, don't love the pick at all, but these guys are just rookies and you need to get some sort of rookie that's actually not a first year player um, as such. And I don't mind paying a little bit of money for a guy that's actually got the scoring history behind him as well. Now these two are interesting picks too as a tight supporter. I think he's going to get a lot of games as high as um, Ralph Smith. I don't really know what his job security is like. Like he played 30 matches, a lot of them as subs as well. Um, he's sort of like just such a fringe player. Um, I just, if he's going to take some of his roles, it's going to have to be Pickett or, or McIntosh. Uh, don't know if Uze has favorites yet, but I just don't feel confident in picking either of those yet. So that's saying something from a Richmond fan. Curtin, Sure, he takes um, Dodo's role uh, in the back line. Uh, I'm leaving him in the back line. I'm not going to leave him in the mid like I've seen a few people do so far. For me, I'm just going to leave defenders in defence um, and hope that one of these mid rookies get a DPP swing or something like that. Gibkiss has got to be the other guy. I think he gets games this year. Um, Grimes, I think now he's not po cap, and I reckon he'll get dropped here and there because he's just not up to standard. And he'll be in the back line of Young and Voss. And so I'm not expecting much. Look, I'm actually probably expecting low 60s average and probably a few 40 games in there, but I think it'll just be enough to flip him at some point. And then the last two are probably pretty common ones that you're going to see in a lot of videos. is Coffield from the Saints going to the Dogs, probably gets 
a decent role in the matter where he plays. And I think at 123k, these guys just placeholders. So I'm sure you'll find someone else if you really need to. And then it could be a Marty Hall, I suppose, down here. Um, who I also have I seen Pink is a guy that they're talking about at North. I think his job security is probably pretty decent there. So I'm probably going to go job security over anything speculative. Um, now, going to jump from the midfield and goes to Rux first. Um, I'm actually going to go a bit different here. Uh, I'm going to go English and pay up because he's just such a good captain option. Um, and he's burnt me in the past for not starting him or not getting him in sooner. Marshall, not really sure this year. Um, I do like him around the ground and whatnot, but he can drop a stinker or two, and I feel like his price could drop a little bit. It's, it is crazy, though, there's 100K between those two, and they're probably roughly the same output. But he even averaged 15 more points than Marshall over the year. That's too big of a gap, really, isn't it? Um, and I just feel like Max Gorn is value now that Grundy's left the side. So that's going to be my one-two combo. Um, so the third guy for my cash generation I'm actually going to use we don't need a whoop. I was thinking about this earlier. You don't need one because there's so many buyers and there's only best at it anyway. So, <laughs> excuse me. And because there's no whoop, that's why I'm paying up for these guys that are expensive because I know they're guaranteed to slap on a C. In the worst case scenario, they're going to do a 110. Okay, so that's my ruck sorted. Um, I'm not going anywhere near Grundy at this stage unless he does something crazy in the next pre-season game in Feb, whenever. Uh, I don't think we've only got really one sample size at it. And then for me, in midfield, I'm going to actually start on Hardy Moore last year. I'm pretty sure. Um, if not, at least the back half of the year. But I'm pretty sure he saved me when Laird couldn't. So he's a lock for me. Um, and then the other midfielders around him, I'm would a bit uncertain. I don't like any of those other ones. I, I do like Zach Butters. I think he's pretty hot, though. So it is a little bit vanilla after seeing him in most people's sides. Uh, it can get annoying. I, I do get that. Tom Green and Errol Gooden, I'll probably skip on for now. Um, I probably want a little bit more value if I can find some. Walsh, his final series, go look it up on Footy Wire. Looks back to be his best. Um, so I rate that pick. I think he's pretty good, and I think he can probably output Similar numbers for the other guys. Pretty sure I'm not understanding the height. I think he's always capped. I don't really see him as a captain either. Like, he doesn't really push a lot of 130s, 140s. I could be wrong there, but that's just the vibe I get from him. Is He's more a 110, 115 kind of guy, week in, week out. And then the other one I've been thinking about a lot is Noah Anderson um, to break out that a little bit more. And the other guy is actually John Newcomb. And I'm tossing between both of those guys. I really want one or the other. And for me, it has to be at the moment, though, pick Miller. Like, before that injury and before playing forward, we know how good he scored. Like, he's just such a, such a beast. Always going from one contest to another. I really rate him. Um, so he's my fourth midfielder. And then... I'm not sure if I will pick a fifth. I probably will have to. I'm not going to go anything too speculative here. These will just be rookie placeholders. Um, and we're starting at, who are we starting at? Surely this boy gets some games. Reed, I'll probably leave for now, that injury news. And once he, you know, sort of gets a, a nice back end of the process and happening, I just don't feel very confident in a West Coast side as yet. Um, so I'll leave him. Oh, do we go to Watson in the midfield? Pretty decent player. <sighs> Highlight package is pretty decent, sorry, actually. Um, chucking me in there for now. Who else are we going? Probably Roberts. I'm sure, he gets some games now. Um, he got injured, he was a bad rookie move last year, but no one sort of sees those. It just happens every now and then. And then who else are we going? Bins. Does Bins get games? Sure, he gets games. He was on the verge of it. Um, and then there's a few Cats players as well. I want to pick, I think Clark will get games. Sharp will get a game, surely. And then I'll leave that spot to see if I need one more rookie or one more 
premium. Probably go with Primo. Four rookies in the midfield looks pretty gross. Four line to finish off for me, Jackson McRae with um, Bazalanki going down is a no brainer. Um, bit of a vanilla pick, but I think he'll probably be top three. And then I'm not really sure who I really like. I think Flanders is a guy that was pretty hot back in the season and, and he'll be a popular F2, I, I feel. And then the rest, I'll be just making up, making up the numbers with rookies again um, and then just sort of see what the leftover cash will be. I'm not really hot on a Billings type of player unless he can cement his 22 within the um, <clears throat> to my preseason. But um, scrolling down, I don't want to pay too much, to be fair, any of these rookies, even though they are, you know, in their peak of their powers. Um, Devo probably gets games, you'd think, um, with what's his name doing an ACL. I'm just going blank. Sure, he gets a gig. Maybe be fighting over, over it with Lions. And then who do I want to go here? I, I like mids in the forward line as well. I don't really love picking forwards in that position, I suppose, if that makes any sense at all. Um, where are we going here? Man, it looks ugly though, doesn't it? The, the further you go down. Just trying to think of some guys that will get games. I might have to look at my notes in a second if I can't see anything that I like. I feel like I'm passing some obvious ones. Does McRae get games? Sure he does with some of the departures at Collingwood. Um, Adams goes. Does McRae get a spot? Guinea's gone to Hawks, so maybe maybe he does. I know they play different positions, obviously. Um, I think. Who else are you going to have to go? Cadman, second-year player. You, you didn't play great. Like <laughs> Average of 22 over 12 games. Mind you, placeholders, so don't come at me in the comments just yet. Bauer. Now, as a Tigers man, I feel like it'll be between him and Kaziski and also um, oh, the guy that was at 190K. What's his name? Just He fumbles too much, so I'm not really sure if he'll get games. Cumberland. So I'm a bit unsure. Um what Sonsi? Sonsi's in the forward line. He'll be he's suspended for the first three or four games, and maybe even more, punching the bloke out. Um, he'd be a good downgrade rookie because I reckon he'll get games. I don't know how he's a forward, he's purely a midfielder. Is that a glitch? Um, anyways, where was I going with this side? Don't want to touch Burgess. Bauer. So now I've got three players left. I want to have a look at my notes. Um, because I did a couple of notes, but haven't really picked a side. Okay, what do we got to play with? 860. So two rookies and a primo. But I don't want to overthink it either. So I just go sort of anybody that feels familiar. Give me a second, I'll look at my notes. Um let me know in the comments if there's any really bad picks that I shouldn't have even gone near because I probably will take your advice and steer clear from them. Um, but you've got to give a good reason, of course. Now, this year also, I'm hoping to get back inside that top 1K. I just managed to slide out. I've had bad starting sides the last couple of years and had to call my way back. Like last year, I started off at 100,000. And I can't remember where I worked my way back to. I got a reasonable score at the end of the year. Sam Darcy, second year player, sure he gets games. And there was another player that I cannot think of that I had in this forward line. Um, let's just use a placeholder. I think Wilson actually will get games early as well. So now we've got 605. Um, so how many primos do we got? How many essentially how many keepers do you have is what you should really be looking into your side as well. So it's three in the back line. Yeah, I'd say young will have to be a keeper. Normally between like position six and fifteen, anyway, is pretty close in defence. So um, you could probably get away with a bit of a a riddly sort of pick and and not lose too many points out from that back line. Um, you normally one to six, pretty clear cut, and then six and fifteen is pretty close. I feel most years. So three keepers there. Um, now we've got 
four keepers in the mid, so that's seven. Two keepers in the ruck, that's nine. Uh, and ten there. And then what I got? Eleven here. So I need to make eleven upgrades. Uh, so that that's fine. I think eleven's about the pass mark. And then here. I don't want Chera, oh, although Chera played really well. I also want a really good captain option out of these sort of picks, or at least a VC, so ceiling would be nice. Rosie, I don't really want to get two of the same team either in the same line, so it's a little bit tricky. Um, round, no. Who can hurt you on the scoreboard? You know what? For now, we'll be a little bit different. We'll go and nuke him and see if he can have a really good fourth year in the system, I'm pretty sure. 56k to play around with. Um, I feel like it's actually a decent looking, decent pick aside. Um, and then VC and C options week in and week out. They're the guys you've got to really consider because I see a lot of people running with, you know, speculative primo mids that I wouldn't be captaining each week. Um, and like some people have their F, sorry, the M1 is like a Walsh type and that really worries me because they're not even running a day cost. So for me, captain options in this side also, well, pure C's that you'd be confident every week would have to be day cost. Bonds um and English and Gorn actually. They're the four I'd be very confident now that Gorn's so lock ruck. I think you'll have Fullerton maybe that come across from Brisbane helping him out. But those four I'm pretty confident. And for VCs, I'm pretty confident we have a Sicily a Butters, Walsh, Miller, Newcomb even. Um, and that's about it. I don't really trust McRae for a VC yet. But I feel like it's it's a decent decent team on paper. Rookies are rookies for now, so can't be too harsh on these players. But it's probably more structure. So what I'm running is a 3-5-2-2. Two, two. Um, I think a lot of people be running... That sort of forward line as well, just to suss out who the forwards are um, come the end of the year. I'm probably more relying on, you know, midfielders getting forward status throughout the year rather than trying to pick which 10 are going to finish top six. Um, and same in defence too. I'm hoping a few mids get a back roll at some stage. So I'm not too concerned. Um, I do want to pick out a breakout player like... With that new can pick, um, there's so many different options at that sort of price as well. Um, it just really depends who who you fancy. And you do want a bit of a pod as well. You want one pod, but you don't want it to be the anti-pod either. So, I mean, Cheryl looked good. Cheryl looked really good. So I could really consider him. Anderson was, was pretty good as well when he wasn't tagged. Does he go to the next level? Do you really want to run an Anderson and Miller together, though? Um, it's my same issue with Rosie and Butters. I don't want Taranto. Um, just he hacks the ball too much for me. Josh Kelly never plays a full season. Kinnear is not really going to hurt you consistently. Warner could be a bit of a smoky, but sometimes his ball use is questionable for me. Um so out of all those breakout picks, really, I don't really want to go back to Jack Steele. Like he's a, I don't want to say he's a has been, but I feel like his injuries have sort of put him back a little bit. Um, Tom Mitchell doesn't have the capability to score one thirties consistently or one twenties consistently. So for me, that speculative pick definitely has to be a Newcomb. Um, I can't see anybody else attempts me. So. That's my first attempt of uh, the draft picker. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of my side. It was a little bit of a ramble, but it is what it is. It's good to be back. It's been three months off. Um, sorry I haven't put out content uh, before Christmas. There just hasn't really been much going on in the way of footy news. It's more cricket season, big bash, and all that kind of stuff. Then you've got tennis next month. So um, I'll do a few more things in... Pre-season, sort of, I'll probably start to take take off uh, um, first, second week of January when I'm back. So I'm uh, going up to New South Wales to see my son. So got a bit on. Um, this year, again, I'm probably going to um, collab with Steve from SDS Supercoach as well. So shout out to him. And, uh, yeah, enjoy your day. Let me know what you guys think of the picks and any thoughts in there. Just chuck them in the comments below. Catch us on the next. Cheers.